I'm Beverly Orr Raper Roper Sigwa. Okay. And you're Margaret Orr's middle daughter. Margaret Orr had five children, two boys and three girls. I'm the middle daughter, Beverly Irene. Your mom and dad had a library before the Whatcom County Library System had a library. My folks owned books. Both of them liked to read, and they owned books. And people found out that Wes and Margaret would loan out their books. So mom took and on the back of the book, at the cover, she put a little, pasted a little triangle of paper, and then she wrote out a card to the name of the book and the author at the top, and if someone wanted to borrow it, she put down their name, and when they brought the book back, then the card went back in the book. I don't know how many books they lost, <laughs> she never said. Anyway, that was why my mother became the librarian, because when Linda Hellyer wanted to start the rural library system in the county, she asked down at Deming uh, Grocery who would be a good person to do a, be a librarian, and that man said, well, I know Margaret and Wes already loan out their books. So that, and Mom just loved the job. She, she liked to read, she liked people. So. so what year was that? I think it's about 1947 but I am not positive of the date, but it was around that. The, there should be a record in the county about when they opened the branch libraries. I think we do have that. Yeah. How long did she work as a librarian? She worked until, oh my, 19, well, when my grandfather died. Um, she, she became cook at Deming grade school and librarian in the afternoon, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and Wednesday evening. Um, probably in the 70s, and my grandfather got very ill, and she had to stay home and help take care of him, and so she had to quit being a librarian. And then they built this new library, and they felt that her training wasn't proper in the modern era to be a librarian because she had never gone to college for it. She just knew how to read and was, and was really interested in books. Okay. Was it like when computer, they started using computers more? Well, yes, they may have been uh, keeping track of the books with a computer. What year was that? Do you remember when they built a new library? No, I don't remember. Uh, she was never librarian. When they built, the old Deming grade school was torn down. It just happened to be my father and Alvy Coolen that tore it down. They got the contract to do it. And they built the, the single story grade school. Then they had a place planned out for the county library. And then they had the school's library in the same room. And it was part of the cafeteria. So she became a cook, and she was a librarian at the same time. Well, Mrs. Kenny, who was the cook at Deming grade school in the big, tall, old building, had to have an operation. Mm -hmm. And so they needed somebody to take over cooking until she got back. So my mother had five children. She knew how to cook. So with the help of the principal, Evelyn, Celine probably back then, she became cook. And Mrs. Kenny enjoyed being home so much she never came back. <laughs> so mother became the cook. It worked well because she cooked in, fixed the meals, and the children were all done and all the dishes were washed by two o'clock when she took up her librarian position. And then at four, she she went home, and then on Wednesday she came back at 7 until 9. She was a very happy lady. So she loved being a librarian. She just loved being a She liked to talk to people about books. She was interested in everything. Both my parents were, and they're way smarter than I am. <laughs> And we all got contaminated with the desire to read books. Yeah. 
So what was your experience going to the library? Well, the high school had books as well, and we took books. I was very into horse stories when I was a, a young girl. And my mother had read stories to us when we were little. So we all grew up in a household where reading was a normal thing. And um, I didn't, I just stopped at the library on the way home and if there was books there that mom knew I would like, then we borrowed those and they had to be back in time. <laughs> but I, I graduated in 1956, so I was gone from home most of mom's years as librarian. And we were all contaminated with books. We all, and we still all read. But I don't read as much anymore, but we used to buy paperbacks. And then we traded them out through the family. That's an old family tradition. It's still going on. Well, my best buddy, Patricia, my sister, has died. And yeah. so what I and Patricia and Joan, when she was around, enjoyed reading is not what... Well, the other kids don't read. None of the young kids read because they're glued to this thing they hold yeah. in the palm of their hand. Yeah. It's a totally way different generation. It's not at all the same. I kind of worry about America. But do you remember which church it was? There was one, and it was it. <laughs> ah, and the, like what year was the fire? Any idea? Uh, no. Uh, Deming Presbyterian Church was the name of it, and we went to Sunday school there in the summertime when it was warm enough and dry enough to walk. We lived up on Marshall Hill. And, and it and it burned down, and that's why everything went into the Deming Elementary School. Is that what happened? It caught fire. Mm -hmm. It didn't burn down then. It caught fire. They got the fire out, and the books went back to headquarters, and then they they were circulated around, and whenever one came back into Deming and my mother opened it, she could smell the smoke, yeah. and she knew that that was one of the ones that had been in the Deming Church. The Deming Church had a... Um, not lean-to, but an accessory building built across the back that had a little kitchen, and that's where the Sunday school was, and uh, meeting rooms, and that's where they had the library. It's because the old men in Deming said, well, you needn't worry about that. That's those darn kids. They stole some cigarettes, and they crawled under the back of the church and were smoking, and they didn't get one of the cigarettes out, and that's why the church burned down. Well, in the middle of the old a part of the church that was uh, where the people sat, there was a great big cedar stump. And they were not able to put the fire out of the cedar stump, so it burned down. Tell them about the smoky books, though. In the back of the library, in the back of the church was a lean-to, and there was, the library was in there. And ever after the fire, when those books came back to the library at Deming and my mother would open them, you could tell right away that they were in the church when it burned because they smelled of smoke. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> but they rescued all the books, right? Well, that was the back of the church, and it was the other part that was burnt that had the fire underneath. Mm -hmm. and, and so the men just put books right out the window <laughs> because there was windows along the back. And they had no trouble putting the books out and they were all rescued. And I suppose they had to go back to headquarters until they found a new place for the library, which was in the brick Deming grade school two-story. The library, the principal at Deming allowed them to go up there. A very small area, but it worked. But and at that time, it was part of the Whatcom County Library System when it yes, was in the church? Yes, it was when Hill, Linda Hellyer came out and, and talked to the little towns to find out who would be the best person to be a librarian at these branch libraries that they wanted to start up to yeah. have around in the county. 
And the man that ran the Deming Grocery said, well, Margaret and Wes loaned their books out. She would probably be a good one for it. And that's how Mom got involved in it. And when the, after they left the church, then the Deming grade school, the big old two-story one, had an, the old principal's office was up on the second floor and it was empty. So they let the county library move into that space. And it was very small. Hmm. There was 10 feet this way and maybe 11 feet that way. <laughs> but it held the books in shelves. And you had to walk up two flights of stairs to get there. In those days, you had lots of space in every room because people used to get TV mm -hmm. because their houses were too small. And in the winter time, everything was closed up tight. And then they found out that houses should have 10-foot ceilings in them. And so the old schools had probably 50 foot ceilings. <laughs> and that worked really well for the, the library. And then they built a new grade school. And they had a part of the cafeteria had the grade school's library. And they built it purposely for room for the county library. And that was nice. So she was sort of a combination uh, school librarian and... No, she never was, uh, no, she w never had anything to do with the school library. The school insisted that a public library would have books that were not suitable for children. Ah. And therefore the school library, when the little kids came in, they whatever class, they always had their teacher with them and they looked at the books in the school library but they weren't allowed to take out books or look at books in the public library. Oh. Because there may have been photographs in some of the books that weren't suitable. Could have been National Geographic's in there. Could have been. Any of those would have been deemed unsuitable. Yeah. Because they had pictures of no naked ladies. Mm-hmm. And that was unsuitable. But that's all right. There's nothing wrong with morals. We don't seem to have any anymore. <laughs> Better turn that off. <laughs>